Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the garage. I've been dealing with a cold for about the last week or so, so I apologize if my voice sounds a little uh, nasally or more nasally than usual. Uh, so today we're going to continue going through the engine tune-up procedure and the next step up is the ignition system. We're going to do a, uh, a quick diagnostic on all of the major components of the ignition system including the spark plugs and their wires, uh, the battery and the charging system or the alternator, the distributor and the coil, and of course when we're done with everything we're, the last thing that we're going to do is do a timing adjustment to a vacuum gauge. And before we start working on the car, I should mention that the procedure that we're going to go through today is really uh, meant to be a quick diagnostic. What this isn't going to be is extensive individual component testing. Um, for instance, when it comes to the distributor, we're going to make sure that the timing is right. We're going to make sure that the rotor and the cap is in healthy condition. We're going to check the air gap, but what we're not going to do is take out the distributor and uh, try to rebuild it from the ground up. As you go through this procedure, if there's anything that you see that is faulty or not to spec, then you can dig into whatever that component is and do a bit more thorough testing. But we're not going to do that today. And lastly, in terms of references, you have to have the FSM to do this. Uh, by FSM, I mean the factory service manual, specifically the EE section or the engine electrical section, which I have printed out here for my uh, year and model, which is a 77280Z. And you can use some of these third-party books as secondary or supplemental references, but these by themselves are not going to help you uh, in this section of the tune-up. And the FSM is important for two reasons. One, it's uh, made for specifically your year and make of your uh, vehicle. And even within the S30Zs, there were so many different types of ignition systems that were used with different components that even something as simple as like a spark plug gap is different or has different recommendations for 240Zs and 280Zs. So you want to be uh, referencing the right specs and the right components. The second reason is that the FSM is a lot more detailed than all three of these books combined when it comes to the electrical system. And of course, the reason is that these books can't be that specific because it's catering to, or this book is catering to all L-series engines. This is, uh, the Haynes manual is supposed to be referencing the 2.4, 2.6, and the 2.8, but most of the, the specs that you'll find in this book are for 2.4s and 2.6s. This, the FSM, has very detailed guides on not only the individual components, but how you can rebuild them. There's all kinds of different testings that you can do. Just the electrical system uh, portion is 30 uh, plus pages long. So this is a reference that you need. The first thing that we're gonna do is check the battery and make sure that it's in good condition. Um, remove the, the connections, negative first. And then the positive. So uh, you, you want to use a multimeter just to check the voltage of the battery, make sure that it's not too low. Of course, all of us uh, have a 12 volt battery. So set it to the right voltage on your multimeter. And you should be uh, seeing something that's between 12.5 and 13. So just simply connect it to 12.8. So we know that this battery has a good charge. If you see anything below 12.3, then that probably means that your battery either needs to be replaced or recharged. Uh, and of course, if your battery isn't in good shape, then your ignition system is not gonna be in good shape. Uh, a fancier way to do this test would be to get a battery tester like this. This is not really necessary, but this could be uh, really helpful if you don't know if your battery needs to be replaced or not. So simply hook up the connections. And we're just going to do a quick test. This one has a whole bunch of different types of tests that you can do, but all you really need to do right now is a quick test. You put in the specifications for your specific battery and this tester is going to tell us the cold cranking amps, the charge, 
uh, so it just finished. I don't know if you guys can actually see this, but it tells me that it's 100% healthy. It has uh, 1,070 cold cranking amps. The charge is at 98%, and it's reading 12.79 volts, which is roughly what we read with the multimeter as well. And it tells me it's a good battery, which means it doesn't need to be replaced, and it's pretty much fully charged. We also want to make sure that the alternator or the charging system is functioning correctly as well. And there's a really simple test that you can do to check um, if your alternator is functioning correctly. So what you're going to do is measure the voltage across the battery while the car is running. The number that you want to see is something in between 13.5 to 14.5, which is kind of the optimal range to charge a 12 uh, volt battery. Anything above 14.5, it's probably charging it too fast and you might end up with a damaged battery. And anything under 13.5, it's probably not charging it fast enough and your battery is just getting drained by the car. And something that you also want to do, especially if you have a lot of electrical equipment in the car, like a aftermarket stereo system, is check the, the voltage again while the car is running, but except this time, put a lot of electrical load on it. So put your high beams on, uh, put your audio system on, turn your air conditioning on if you have it, and the voltage should remain close to 14, maybe a little bit lower, but your voltage should not be dropping all the way to 12. Next, we're gonna check all the spark plugs. So keep your battery disconnected. We're gonna pull all of the spark plug wires. And we're gonna uh, remove all of the spark plugs and examine the condition that they're in. And if you've been following my channel, you guys probably saw me remove these spark plugs like 30 times. But what I never showed you guys is what the, um, the spark plugs actually look like inside. So we're just gonna set the spark plugs in order. And the condition that the spark plugs are in can tell you a lot about the engine. It can tell you whether you're running rich or lean. It can even tell you if you have um, excessive oil con consumption or if you have a coolant leak. It can tell you if your engine is running too hot or too cold. Knowing how to read spark plugs is a very fundamental skill that you need to have as someone who likes to work on their own cars. So we popped out all the plugs. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So make sure you know which um, plug came out of which cylinder. I replaced these plugs uh, right when I got the car, um, but not after I started working on the engine. So this thing probably has around 200 miles on it, but 200 miles is plenty for you to start seeing the patterns uh, or to read the spark plug. And since I had these same plugs even before the head rebuild and all the work that we did to the car, the plug readings are not necessarily indicative of the condition that the engine is in now, but let's just go through the spark plugs and see um, how they look. This one is from cylinder number one. It looks pretty clean. It looks uh, slightly toasted, which is good. Doesn't have excessive carbon buildup or uh, it doesn't look wet. An excessive carbon buildup, if it was completely black, it would uh, tell you that either the engine is running way too rich or that cylinder has uh, excessive oil consumption. So this one looks pretty good. Now this is cylinder number two, which does look a little bit uh, white, but it's not excessive. It still looks pretty clean. There's not excessive carbon buildup. So I would say that one's okay. Three also looks pretty good. Same thing, it looks almost identical to cylinder number one. This one does have a little bit of blistering. Um, it could be that Cylinder number three's injector before we replace it was plugged up a little bit and it was running a little bit hotter than the other uh, cylinders. Now, cylinder number five is a problematic one. Cylinder number five is, this one is a lot blacker and wetter than the other ones. You know, in the exhaust episode, we noticed that there was uh, blue smoke that's coming from the exhaust pipe 
uh, at engine's deceleration. And of course, that got us thinking to where is this oil coming from? The compression test looked fine. Uh, the head was rebuilt, so I was kind of at a loss. But looking at cylinder number five, uh, it could point to a bad oil ring on cylinder number five. The oil consumption isn't coming in at all cylinders, it's just right here uh, at cylinder number five. Looking at cylinder number six, again, this one looks fairly clean. So really the only concerning thing that I see is cylinder number five. But again, I'm gonna replace all of the plugs right now because I want to read the conditions uh, that the engine is currently in, not what it was before. And after about 200 miles of driving, I'll pull the spark plugs out one more time to check back up on, especially in the cylinder number five. If, it's, if the new plug comes out exactly like this, then I know that I still have a problem. But if we pull the new spark plug out and it looks fine, then it's a problem that we probably already solved. So I'm going to be replacing all of the spark plugs with new NGK units. So I'm using BPR6ES, um, but you should be checking the FSM for what is recommended for your vehicle. Um, the factory service manual actually for the 77Z uh, recommends the B6ES-11. The dash 11 at the end refers to the gap size. But this is essentially the same plug that has been gapped to a different size. It's slightly lower. Speaking of the gap, we, the gap that we should be looking for in this vehicle is anything from 0 0.039 inches to 0 0.043 um, inches or 1 to 1 1.1 millimeters. So we're going to take out the spark plugs. It usually comes with kind of a cardboard tube to make sure that the ends of the spark plug doesn't get damaged. So we're going to check this gap. So insert in your gapper tool. You can find this at most auto parts stores for like $2. So we're going to slide this in. And it looks like this thing was gapped to below 0 0.03 inches. So we're going to need to gap this to get it into spec and you have a little gap opener. Don't just uh, squeeze this in and try to gap it that way. Uh, you'll probably damage the unit. So we're gonna use the gap opener to open it up slightly, check it again. And now we are at 0.036. So we just needed to open it up a little bit more. So this thing is gapped at 0 0.041, which is close enough. So the spark plug is ready to go. So we're gonna use just a bit of anti-seize on the threads. A little goes a long way here. Wipe away the excess. You don't want this squeezing out everywhere. Now you really don't have to be all that precise in tightening your spark plugs, but if you want to take out the guesswork, you can set it to 15 foot-pounds. I think the factory recommendation is anything from uh, 11 to 15. So we're actually gonna set it to 13 to be right in the middle. And there it is. So while we're installing these spark plugs, we might as well go over just a few more uh, tech tips for the spark plugs. Uh, one, if you're trying to open up the gap on these spark plugs, just take it easy. Don't, don't uh, do it too aggressively and overshoot your target because bending the, the spark plug electrode back and forth uh, is just going to weaken it. So you don't want to touch it or move it uh, any more than you have to. Just try to shoot for a few hundredths of an inch at a time to get it into the range that you want. Second, before you install the spark plug, uh, just take a microfiber towel like this and clean off the spark plug hole before you install it. So you want to clean off any extra anti-seize 
and especially check for the previous crush ring that might be lodged in there. Uh, and speaking of crush rings, each spark plug comes with a crush ring like this. This does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, once you torque the spark plug down, it crushes and seals the spark plug in place. Sometimes when you remove the spark plug, this seal uh, or the crush ring will remain in the hole. So you'll need to make sure to remove that before you install a new one. And lastly, it doesn't really matter what position the spark plug ends up being rotated in. I know for some performance engines, it's important to align the round of the electrode of the spark plug to the intake valve. For the stock L-series engines, the specific position of the, the electrode ground really doesn't matter, so you don't have to worry about that too much. And lastly, uh, don't just toss out your old spark plugs, even if you don't plan on using them ever again. Um, I like to keep them around and keep them labeled. Uh, this one was from cylinder number four. And I, I like to keep them around mostly for comparative purposes. When I pull out the new spark plugs, I wanna be able to see the difference, if there are any, uh, between the old and the new spark plugs. So we have all of the spark plugs reinstalled and all of the spark plug wires reconnected to their proper positions. And also we have the battery reconnected. If you think about what we did so far in this episode is that we've made sure that the beginning of the ignition system, which is the battery, and the end of the ignition system, which is the spark plugs, are in good condition. What we're gonna walk through in the next episode is everything in between, um, mainly the wires, the distributor, and the ignition coil. And we'll walk through some tests that you can do to make sure that all of the components are uh, functioning correctly in your ignition system. Uh, we're gonna check for spark um, at all of the cylinders. And even if we do see spark at all six, uh, we're gonna go into a hypothetical troubleshooting mode and I'll uh, try to walk through what you guys should do if you see uh, weak or no spark at one or two of the cylinders or if you see zero spark at all of the cylinders. So be on the lookout for the next uh, episode.